Okay, I just thought I'd just do an overview of the Kubota V4290 plow that I have. Straight plow. Um, the plow blade itself, 72 inches, spring, spring trip here. Um, it's hinged right at this point here. So it will angle. And this is the cylinder, hydraulic cylinder, that will, will do the angling for you. The plow ends here, this triangular female section. This is the quick hitch, which is basically a narrow down, it looks like a tongue basically, a male, the male part that goes inside and then it latches at this point here. Uh, that lifts the plow up and down via this cylinder here. So mounted here, up at the top, through this pin here, and then down on the plate, which and this whole plate is hinged via those two arms onto that rod, silver rod. Um, and all of this is basically controlled and run by these four hoses, the two hoses to the angle and the two hoses to the lift uh, from the control, hydraulic control unit here. Um, all of this is Kubota. Um, there's some electrical, you can see electrical wires in the back here that control all the solenoid valves, etc. All this bundle of wiring uh, and of course the hydraulic um, cables all go inside the cab and, and, in, and ultimately to the motor, etc. to get to the hydraulic system, to the pump. Um, it's all controlled. By uh, this control handle on the gear shift. Very, very handy. You drive her along, one hand's on, my right hand's on the on here, and the left hand's doing the steering. Um, it just seems so simple, so natural. So let's go back a couple months and see how I got this plow mounted. Time to go. Okay, the first piece we need is the lifting arm. That's this guy. You can see with the, obviously the eyes, what do you call go into that bar. So you have to pull this bar off. Uh, just a spring clip here. Easier said than done. Okay, so let's pull the spring clip off. Now, on the other end of this bar, there's a big handle there. So if we rotate that handle. <coughs> That just slides out. Uh, just slides out to there. So we'll just put that there. So it's just peeking. And we're gonna lift this guy and position this in that bar. Okay, so the lifting bar is now in place. So now we have to mount the piston that connects uh, from here on the RTV to here, and that's what lifts the plow up and down. Okay, so there's the piston. Just a piston with two lines. So we connect the bottom of the piston to the bottom, the top of the piston to the top, and we connect the two hydraulic lines to the hydraulic controller. Okay, so the piston's now connected. Now we have to hook up the lines they're fairly easy because they put a white to the white and an orange to the orange. So just connect those up. Okay. Okay. There's a little nipple on the top. I find sometimes if there's pressure in the system, it's very hard to connect the lines up. So what I do sometimes is just pop that down a little bit. There you go. Just push my finger. That just releases a little bit of extra if there's any uh, caught pressure in the system. The important thing on these is to push it down until you hear it click. There. It's clicked. Okay, so that's good. Those two lines. So now we should have control 
of the upsy downsy. Because we're gonna to wanna to line up this tongue with the slot, uh, with the slot right here in the plow. A little hard to see covered in snow. We'll get that brushed off and you'll see that. Okay, so I have to line up. That tongue is a little, little high. So I have to lower that tongue to fit it into that slot. It's hard to see, uh, but there is a slot there. So what I gotta do is lower that and then move the RTV closer to the plow. And let's see if we can get it lined up. So as often happens in the world of dicking around, uh, there are two oranges. Of course I had connected to the wrong orange. I'll show you. Okay. So there's orange and a white. But yeah, there's another orange down there. So I had them, the orange connected here. So I've now transferred it down to here. And let's test that. That should work gooder. Okay. Uh, turn the key. Okay, a lower should be right here. And sure enough, that's gone low. Too low. Let's raise it a little bit. Too much. Yeah, I might be able to live with that. Let's try that. Okay, so that's lined up. It's starting to slide in. The plow's not that hard to move. It's hard to lift, but not so hard to move. Okay, so that's kind of on the tongue. I'm gonna to try to just lift the whole plow up and hopefully that'll just slide backwards into place. So, we'll do the raise. Press that button there. Sure enough, the plow is lifted up. Swing cylinder, hoses connected. We've got the plow connected. We're good to go. Let's lift her up, swing it, make sure we got full range of motions, and we can go plow. By the way, I was gonna do this yesterday. There wasn't any snow here yesterday. This is the first day of snow, so. I was a day late. I, yeah, I was full of good intentions of uh, getting this plow on yesterday, but I had to change the snow put the snow tires on my uh, Volkswagen Alltrack, so that took precedence over getting the plow on. But the plow's now on, so let's lift it up and go put it through its motions and make sure it's working good. Okay, trolls, we're gonna raise it and then we're gonna swing it. 
So we're going to raise it up. Yep, works like a charm. Okay, so now we're going to swing it. Works like a charm. Swing it the other way. There you go, put it back to center. Okay, and if we want to lower it, we can either, two things, you can either lower it like that, or you can hit in the float position. If I do the float, it just drops. And it's now just lying on the ground. It's floating. If I hit if I hit the lower button, it lifts the whole RTV up. I don't know if you can see that, but yep. Okie doke. I think we're done. Okay, so I've come to the junction where our driveway, this is uh tracks ahead of you there uh, leading to the house uh, I came up so that's why they look fresh the other tracks leading to the right here are where my son left uh, early this morning to go to work um, anyway let's swing out towards the towards the, the road and we'll drop the plow down there we go plows down Driveway cleared out. Uh, easy peasy. Um, you can see the first stretch that we plowed. So we'll just go down the middle and then one more pass. And, uh, three passes and clear right off. And uh, wait for the next snowfall. Not very much, but I find if you don't get at it, it'll freeze. Then you wait for a nice warm day for it to warm up, and the warm day never comes. And then you end up with this covering of crap. So you best to get at it. Okay, somebody was asking uh, or asking what speed you plow. Ninety percent of the time, I, uh, this is a three-speed unit. This is a 2000 and, uh, 2004 model. Sorry, this is a 2007 model. Uh, I bought it in 2011. Um, been using it for going on 11 years. So this one, with the, like I said, 90% of the time, I'm using low. A few, and those 10% times, it can use medium when you're pushing back, when you're not when you're doing heavy snow, but when you're doing this light snow and you just want to make a quick run, there's no problem using the, using the medium. I'm even on a hill right at the moment. Um, I'm gonna keep the uh, edge not the outer edge, but the uh, next rib there. I'm going to keep that about the edge of the snow line. Just so you don't get me important moving out. There we go. Okay, we'll see what it looks like when we're at the other end. So that's what we're looking like. It's a little heavier now because I've got that one ridge of snow all piled up, so I drop her down a low for the next pass. a paved road, you really don't know where the edge of the driveway is. You just gotta go by memory, by feel, by look. <laughs> and eventually you figure it out. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, video of mounting the Kubota plow for the season. Um, I'll just keep recording various things that's going around here at Tall Pines. Uh, it's just a regular mishmash of this, that, and the other. So uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and 
just keep doing what you're doing, making progress. Thank you.